What's going on fish nerds? Carlos here and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about how to keep, feed, and breed Mexican dwarf orange crayfish. And also make sure you stick around towards the end of the video because I'm going to announce a giveaway to celebrate hitting 1,000 subscribers. So stay tuned. So here's the 20 tall that we added the Mexican dwarf orange crayfish to. Here's one crawling around back here. And I am really, really enjoying these guys and just how active they are. They're constantly moving around, popping out of crevices and walking around on the rocks. And I've actually seen them several times crawling all around this piece of driftwood, crawling out on the branches and everything like that and crawling out to the edges. So they've just been really fun to watch. They're constantly moving. So they're constantly coming in and out of view, showing up here, showing up there. And uh, it's just really fun watching these guys. And if you remember from the last video when I unboxed these guys, one of them was acting like it wasn't going to make it. And it did end up passing overnight. Uh, didn't make it to the next day. And then after that, one day later, I did lose another one. So I was down to two. And then I did end up going to my local fish store and they had them in stock. So I got another pair there from my local fish store. I got a male and a female from them. What's pretty cool was the female actually had a couple of eggs already. Now, as far as keeping these guys, there's nothing about what they need that really is too difficult to provide. Uh, pH, they can handle anything from a six and a half up to an eight, you know, just you're, you're neutral to higher pH. They do need hard water. They need plenty of calcium in the water. So hard water is very important for these guys. These guys do have an exoskeleton that they're going to be molting and replenishing. So it is very important that they have hard water with plenty of calcium in order to support that exoskeleton growth and also to support healthy molts because they will be molting like a shrimp would and then replenishing that exoskeleton. So hard water with plenty of calcium, very important for these guys. Temperature wise, these guys are really pretty flexible. They do not need a heater in the tank. And yes, I realize there is a heater in this tank, uh, but I didn't put that in here for these guys. It was already in here, but it is turned all the way down. Uh, because really room temperature water is going to be fine for these guys. Uh, anywhere in the 70s, they're going to be totally comfortable. And I've actually kept these guys outside and all the way down into the 40s. And they were doing just fine outside. So these guys can handle a wide range of temperatures and they do not need a heated aquarium. What else is very important for these guys is that they have plenty of hiding places, especially if you're going to be keeping them in a group. Like I said, they will be molting their exoskeletons and that short period of time right after a molt makes them vulnerable to predators, which can include other crayfish. So I do have a group of them in here. So it's very important that we have all these little hiding places and crevices and little caves that they can get into and hide after a molt because they will cannibalize each other uh, if given the opportunity. So it's very important that in that time after a molt, they have a place to hide and get away from everybody else so that they're not exposed. Something else that's really great about these guys is that they are actually just fine in a planted tank. So they are too small to really do much damage when it comes to digging up plants and they don't tear up and eat healthy plants like a lot of your larger crayfish species will do. A lot of your larger crayfish will just rip plants to shreds and eat them. These guys generally leave healthy plants alone and don't have the strength to be uprooting your plants and tearing them up and messing up your aquascape. So if you've got a planted tank, these guys can go in a planted tank just like shrimp can. They actually look really great in a planted tank as well because they'll climb all over the plants and things. 
As far as tank mates for these guys, you really have a lot of options considering that they are a crayfish. Now obviously you don't want to keep them with anything that's going to eat them. They're not a very large invertebrate. They max out at about two inches. There are a lot of fish that are going to be big enough to eat these guys. I honestly wouldn't recommend angelfish. You do run the risk that an angel would pick at these guys. And you also run the risk with an angel being a larger, slower moving fish with a little bit flowier fins, especially if you've got a veil tail angel. These guys will latch on to some flowing fins and uh, that's not something you want to put your angelfish through. While these are generally a peaceful crayfish considering their size, uh, they will latch on to a long flowing fin. So angelfish, not necessarily something I would recommend to put these guys with. That goes for bettas and other fish with long flowing fins. Not something you would want to put in here with these guys. So some suggestions of things that might work with these guys would be potentially something along the lines of like zebra danios that are small enough and peaceful enough that they're not going to bother the craze and uh, they're going to be swimming around in more of your open spaces and they're going to be plenty fast enough to get away from the crayfish. These guys would have a hard time catching a zebra danio. Also any of your peaceful top dwelling fish are going to be fine with these guys in general. So things like your hatchets, you know, your marble hatchet, silver hatchet fish, something like clown killies might work in a tank with these guys, or you'd have the crayfish, you know, all over your structures and the bottom of the tank, and then your clown killies swimming in generally the top portion of the tank. These guys do prefer calmer water, so you're not necessarily going to want power heads really turning the water around or an oversized filter. So something like a sponge filter would be great for these guys. Another thing to consider for the tank itself is to make sure you have a nice lid on the tank so that they don't have means of escaping because they are climbers. So any tubes or anything that are running into the tank, they can climb up those and ride out the tank. So you want to make sure you have a secure lid so that these guys don't escape. Now when it comes to feeding these guys, they are opportunistic omnivores. They eat pretty much anything that you feed them. Uh, so you do want to get them you know, some variety, get them a good quality sinking pellet, something that's going to get down to the bottom of the tank where they can get a hold of it. Uh, they will eat algae wafers, shrimp pellets, uh, any of your sinking pellets. They will eat uh, live foods and frozen foods that make it to the bottom. So your frozen blood worms and frozen brine shrimp, uh, live black worms, all these are great options for them. And you can even feed these guys, you know, regular vegetables, you know, green beans, carrots, that kind of thing. Just make sure you don't leave any fresh foods like that in the tank long enough to spoil if they don't eat it all. I will say if you're keeping several of these in a tank, uh, you don't want to throw in just one algae wafer and call it good. You want to either break it up into pieces and scatter it around or feed more than one because they will grab it and claim it as theirs and they will fight over it. So to avoid food aggression and them trying to fight over what belongs to who, I do recommend either feeding several small pellets or breaking it up into pieces. Something else about feeding these guys, if they are left unfed and get hungry, they will help themselves to any ram's horn snails or pond snails, uh, any of the bladder snails, pest snails that are in the tank. They will get a hold of those and pull them out of their shells and eat those and help themselves. Now as for breeding these guys, it really is as simple as having a proper tank set up and making sure you've got at least one male and one female in the tank and they pretty much take care of the rest on their own. Now the way you tell a male from a female is on their underbelly where the main part of the body meets the tail. So between the swimmerettes and the legs, there'll be a blank space there where there is nothing on the female, just like a smooth spot on her underbelly there where the tail meets the body. And on the males, 
there'll be two little small appendages, looks like an extra set of swimmerettes that lay up against the body pointing towards the head. So that's how you tell the difference between the males and females. I would show a picture of those, but I failed to get a picture before I put these guys in the tank and uh, anything online has copyrights, so I don't want to uh, steal somebody else's image for the sake of the video. But there are plenty of images out there online that illustrate what I'm talking about. So what happens with these guys when they breed is the male will actually take the female and he will flip her over on her back and he'll hold her down and uh, use his big claws to pin her down on her back and uh, he'll do his thing and then it'll take a week to four weeks later depending on your water temperature uh, before she will actually release eggs and when she does that she'll just find a nice safe spot to hide and she will then uh, release the eggs down into her swimmerettes similar to a shrimp and she'll hold the eggs up underneath her tail and she'll carry those for about four to five weeks those eggs will start to hatch and the baby crayfish will just be miniature versions of their parents so they they don't have you know stages that they go through or anything they are crayfish from the get-go complete with claws and they just enter the world as little miniatures and the care requirements for the babies are the same as for the adults just give them plenty of hiding spaces and they'll eat the same foods and everything all right guys and now it's time to get to the announcement but first i just have to say thank you seriously guys thank you so so much i say it at the end of every episode but it really is true you guys are awesome we hit this past weekend 1,000 subscribers. That's just, I, that's just, it blows my mind that, and really it's, it's, it's humbling that there's 1,000 people that have watched my videos and liked something about my videos or about this channel or about me enough that they said, I'm going to subscribe so that I can see more of this and be a part of what's going on here. I mean, this is a huge, huge milestone for me to hit 1,000 subscribers. And I know, I understand that there's some big channels out there that, you know, they, they can look back on when they first got 1,000 subscribers and think to themselves, wow, I was really excited about 1,000 subscribers and here I am now and 1,000 subscribers is nothing. But I'm not one of those channels. I'm not that big. I've not had that level of success that they've got. I haven't earned that yet. And so for me to be here at this point where we've hit a thousand subscribers, it's just huge for me. And I'm really, really appreciative to you guys. It really means a lot that there's 1,000 plus, because we're, we've, we've even passed that now throughout the week, we've picked up some more, that there's over a thousand of you that have cared enough and liked what we're doing here on this channel enough to say I want to be a part of it because really you guys are a part of this this isn't just like a show where I make something put it out there and it's all one way where you can watch but not give back but like through the comments and the live streams and the sense of community that we have here you know on this channel and in the fish fam in general with the fish keepers on YouTube it's it's just so awesome and it's a community and this is a community and I'm so glad to be a part of it and I'm so glad that you guys are a part of it and that you've decided to join me on this channel and be a part of what we're doing here and it really it's I want to say it's humbling but I want to say it in a way that it doesn't sound fake because it's not fake at all it really is truly humbling for me that you guys want to get behind this and and make this channel better make this channel more valuable to the people that are watching it because that's what I'm trying to do here I'm trying to add value to your guys's lives and your guys's hobby by sharing what I'm doing with mine this isn't just an outlet for me and it doesn't just make it easier for me to keep fish if I video it it, it actually makes 
the hobby a little more difficult when every time you do something you have to video it and then it takes away from the time that I can spend in the fish room when I'm editing video and stuff like that but it's worth it because I know that it's adding value to somebody and somebody's getting something out of it and the way I measure that is because of the comments that you guys are leaving and because you guys are watching the videos and giving the thumbs up and subscribing to the channel that's why I'm so appreciative for all the support that you guys are showing and, and all my tank lights are going out but that's why I, I just really so appreciate all the support because you guys are the reason I'm doing this. I want, whether it's because you learned something from one of my DIY videos or a video like today where I'm talking about a certain species and how to keep it, or even if it's just relational value because we're connecting as a community and there, there's value there, and that's not to be discounted at all. That's That may even be like the best part of this. Or even if it's just entertainment value from like the store tours and it's fun to watch and see what other people are doing and see a cool fish and hey, that'd be awesome if I could get a hold of that fish, that kind of stuff. As long as you guys are getting something out of it, that's what I'm trying to shoot for. That's what I'm trying to accomplish. And uh, I am trying to make this channel better i'm trying to make my videos better you know i i bought a, a a better camera so i can have better video quality so it's more enjoyable for you to, guys to watch these videos i bought some uh editing software so i can you know play around with that so it's more enjoyable for you guys because i want to make this more valuable for you guys and your guys's support is what drives me and keeps me going so thank you so much for all the kind words that you guys have put in the in the comments, all the positive and the critical feedback that has have made me better, and for all the support, liking the video, subscribing, I just I can't say enough how much I appreciate it. I overrode the timer so that the lights would be on for the rest of the video. All right, so now for the part that you've actually been waiting for, the details on the giveaway. So here's the rules: you need to like this video be a subscriber and leave a comment below and you can leave as many comments as you want either sometime next week or the week after to give you guys plenty of time to see this video and leave comments i will do a live stream and in that live stream i will run a random comment selector to pick three winners second and third prize will both get a fish nerd t-shirt in their size and choice of color whether it's the yellow gold that i'm wearing now or the green, the orange, or the gray, just let me know. And first prize will also get a t-shirt as well as a $20 aquarium co-op gift card. Okay, so those are the rules, those are the prizes, and I just wanna say one more time before closing out this video, you guys are awesome. God bless you fish nerds, I'll see you next time.